Hey friend, and welcome back to RGD Gaming, the least toxic, most fun community all gaming. Have you ever heard of the term power spikes? I'm sure you have at least heard of it, but do you really understand what it means to have a power spike? Here's how I think about a power spike. It's a brief window of time where I or my team has just become significantly stronger than we were just a few seconds ago. This might seem like a trivial idea, but let me assure you that when used and abused properly, it can mean a significant advantage for you and your ability to win games. In this video, I'm going to talk about power spikes for every lane and matchup that I face in this particular match. I'll start with my lane, and then throughout the video, I'm going to go into each lane, why they matter, why it's important to you, and why you should be aware of what's happening around the map. I want you to take a second and think about this lane matchup, Zarian Karma versus Misfortune Leona. Can you instantly identify where and when all the power spikes and advantages are in this matchup? Try to think of them, pause the video if you have to, and see if you can get them all. The very first power spike actually happens when Misfortune and Leona hit level 3. Leona roots, she uses her shield for defense, stuns whoever she is able to root, ignites, then Misfortune puts a slow on them, double taps if possible, or at least uses that ability, and then uses her second ability for attack speed. Done properly, that can take one half to two thirds health from anybody that they're able to hit with this combo. Now, where is our power spike? Technically, Karma at level one is a spike in that her poke is very strong at level one, and then at level three with her root, her first ability to slow, and then her shield. However, my power spike doesn't come until level five when I get my ultimate. So what are we supposed to do? Up until Zara gets her ultimate, getting a kill in lane is really hard, although not impossible, but very difficult to do. You just don't want to force fights when you're laning with a Zeri before level 5. Minions get in the way of her, it causes her problems, she misses auto attacks. At level 5, she can use her jump to get over a wall and cover a huge distance, then her second ability through that wall to slow and crit her enemy, use her ultimate on the enemies for a burst damage, then her first ability to stack more damage and put an additional slow on them, and then hopefully steal shields from the enemy that is now panicking and just using all of their abilities, and then also her team can also put a shield on her at that point as well. This Karma actually plays this lane with me beautifully. Karma very early wants to poke, sort of push advantages, and stay out in front of the enemy, but in this case, she actually doesn't get crazy, she stays back with me, and seems to understand power spikes. I suppose you don't get to be the number 10 karma on the server without having some concept of how to play the champion, and also it ends up working out great that I happen to pick Zeri when they are the number 10 karma as well. And so it's really great that she's not diving in too far, getting rooted by Leona, because you can see Leona is posturing very aggressively right now. She she wants to hit her root, she wants to get that stun, and wants to land that combo with Miss Fortune, who's also really trying to do her best poking and pressuring us, which is exactly what they should be doing in this lane matchup. They should be putting pressure on us, they should be trying to get us to miss farm, uh, which I actually missed one right there. But they're doing a good job as well, because they sort of need to be aggressive, and they want to get into a fight early. Leona wants to hit that route and then misfortune wants to combo real fast and get a quick kill but karma staying back we're able to poke farm up and wait for our power spikes in order to be able to really take advantage of this lane matchup now let's add one more layer to this match that we should be considering before i try to tell you what the answer is try to think about the mid lane matchup and how that should go and what we should expect in regards to ganks from our mid lane First, there's Pike. Well, anytime after level 3, it's very possible and the best Pikes are capable of roaming at level 3. Our mid is a Pantheon who can rotate very well after level 5, and that's when he becomes a huge threat. So we need to keep that in the back of our mind and keep an eye on the map to make sure that we don't get rotated on and let Pike get an early kill and let him snowball. Okay, we are getting very close to our first power spike, which is level 5. And we also have some other good news. Arcane is on our side of the map, which means he can be set up for a possible rotation. So what we really need to be is what we really need to do is start considering the possibility of a rotation. 
and you can see Kane's here. Kane already sort of peeked to the edge there, sort of thought about rotating, realized it wasn't great, and now we got to clear this vision, and once we clear the vision, it looks like he's sort of game on for this. Hopefully, what we're really looking for is to hit our power spike level 5, and we do, so this is perfect. Kane uses his third ability, goes through the wall. I jump the wall as well, use my ultimate, I flash, hoping to get a kill. Leona jumps in a little bit deep and probably doesn't realize how much defense I can actually put out with my shield, karma shield, and my ability to steal theirs, and we're able to get a successful gank. And that's what you need to wait for. I don't need to force the lane prior to that moment. What I want is to hit my power spike, and at the moment that I hit it, Kane jumps in for a gank as well, so that's perfect. I don't know if he actually realizes that he did it, or it just happened to work out that all the timing went perfect, but that was absolutely beautiful. I hit my power spike, and as soon as that happens, Kane goes over the wall, I go over the wall, I use my ultimate, Karma does everything that she needs to do to back us up, and we're able to get a kill. Beautiful gank. Great job. Something just happened that I don't even think you've realized, and you're probably not sure why I'm taking this fight against Misfortune. Well, there's two specific reasons why I'm taking the fight. The first one is that Misfortune is not great in one versus one situations. If she misses her first ability, she is all but dead in one versus one against almost any ADC. The second thing is, I don't know if you saw when I looked at the marketplace, I was able to buy $2,000 worth or 2,000 gold worth of items. She was only able to spend 1200 and part of it actually was on ability haste, which is not does not help you in a one versus one situation when the fight's over in just a couple of seconds. And so I knew that I had Misfortune alone, I had spent more gold, I was stronger than her, and most likely I could 1v1 her in an even situation anyway. And so what do I do? I jump on top of her, take advantage of that spot that Leona left his ADC alone, and get that second kill. And you need to be aware, that was a mini power spike. I mean, it's really not a power spike to get not your first full item. But you need to be aware when little things like that happen that you can take advantage of the enemy ADC or whoever you're going against and be able to get a kill on them solo. Because now I'm way ahead of Misfortune. I actually get my next power spike, which is my first full item. And I'm in a way better position than they are right now. Okay, take a peek at the map. Leona's in mid, Pike's in mid and Karma is rotating this way, and who shows up in lane? Misfortune. I'm able to hit her with my second ability, jump at her, first ability, and what's happening here? I hit my first, my second power spike, which was my first full item, and I saw that I had Misfortune alone again. Huge blunder on her part, and I was able to get another solo kill. And at this point, Leona is going to have a very difficult time getting a kill on me, unless I'm very low in health, or she can get some additional help from one of her teammates because she relies on a shield, which I steal from her, and I'm very mobile with my third ability, and I've also got a couple of kills now, my first full item, which I will say is another power spike. So Immortal Shield Bow is one of the best first items you can get on Zeri and one of my favorites easily for a couple of reasons. You get attack damage, attack speed, vamp, and then also crit, and a shield, which is perfect because the shield actually gives you movement speed when it ends up when you end up needing it. So when you get low in health, you get the shield, and that gives you additional movement speed, so you're protected and you can get out of the way and get away from the enemy. It's basically the perfect item on Zeri. There's almost no better item you could design that you'd want on her. I want to add another layer to this video, and that's the jungle matchup. So think about who the jungles are. We've got Kane and Olaf. And try to imagine where the ganks should come from, where their power spikes are, and what we should be thinking about as the ADC. Pause the video if you have to, if you can't think about it instantly, but let's start with their jungle a lot. Unless we or somebody is way out of position, it's pretty hard for Olaf to gank very early in the match. He needs to land his axe, which is an aimed ability, and even if he lands it, it's not that great of a slow, it's not a stun. And what he really wants to do is catch somebody in a weird spot early, and then actually his real first power spike is when he gets his ultimate. And he wants to use that either with Rift Herald or a Dragon to wreak havoc in the pit and just start mowing people down and be able to chase everybody down. His early great ganks, his early ganks aren't that great. Kane, on the other hand, is very capable, and you actually saw at level three, he can shadow step through a wall and then either knock up or slow depending on which form he's in. 
And so we should really be thinking about that as we're laning against our matchups, and then also as the game develops and moves into the later states. Do me a favor, comment if you like how this video is flowing. Do you feel like the point is being clearly made and in a way that makes sense? This is a good time that we should actually think about the top lane matchup and where their power spikes are and how that should be going. Okay, and go. All right, Renekton. He actually spikes at level two with his stun and first ability. Then he spikes again at three with his dash because he can dash in, stun, first ability, dash out, and then again at level five for his ultimate where he gets a bunch of health and can take a ton of damage. Tristana, it can be strong at level one, but not always. And she really is only strong if she can land her bomb and get some auto attacks off. And then maybe her jump, but it's really not that huge of a threat early. Her level 5 spike isn't that great either. It can be good, but she really doesn't get strong until she gets two, maybe three items. And then around level 8 to 10, she becomes stronger because her range increases as well. And so she's really not a big threat to us early on. But she can get going and cause a problem for us if she's allowed to steamroll her lane. Ziri's next power spike comes with each additional item. I like to go Phantom Dancer as my second item. It gives you attack damage, more crit, which actually enhances the shield from a mortal shield bow, attack speed, movement speed, and an attacking, a stacking attack speed as well. Movement speed and attack speed are important for Ziri to keep up with the enemy and land auto attacks. You can miss with their auto attacks, so you want to be able to move and attack quickly to get kills. The only caveat to getting the second item is I will build anti-heal somewhere before the second item is done. I'll also build Serpent's Fang if the enemy has a lot of shields. I'll usually do that first item actually if they have a ton of shielding. And then I'll also build the defensive item that'll give me either defense against attack damage or ability power depending on what the enemy comp is if they're heavily stacked with attack damage or heavily stacked with ability power. Huge pet peeve of mine coming up. Okay, Leona's dead, Pike's dead, Misfortune shows herself clearing waves, Olaf shows himself on the top side of the match, and you're the ADC all alone. Just start the dragon. I have the dragon at half health by the time my jungle shows up, and all that you really want to consider is if the enemy jungle is going to come after you, or if somebody's going to come after you, just walk away and the dragon will restart and your jungle comes and you can fire it up again. But in that case, uh, there was nothing to even worry about. Their jungle was on the opposite side of the map. The other thing to think about is if there's going to be a smite battle, you don't want to get the ju the jargon down to, say, under 1,000 health because the enemy jungle can come in, use an ability, and smite the dragon and steal it from you. So just keep that in mind, but you can sort of keep it hovering around a couple thousand health and let your jungle come in. Okay, we've won the match. We abused all of our power spikes and we're able to take advantage of the enemy not, a use it, not using their power spikes. Hopefully this makes sense. If you made it to the end, do me a favor. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Hopefully I see you on the Rift. GG.